This is Extra Paycheck Podcast, episode number 146. You're listening to Extra Paycheck Podcast, where you will learn how to build and grow your own successful online business. Now, here's your host, Alex Soule. Welcome to yet another episode of the Extra Paycheck Podcast. This is episode number 146. And in today's episode, I will be talking to you about finding images for your blog, for your social media campaigns, for your YouTube channel, and for any other kind of content that you're creating online for your business or for your online projects. So first of all, why do you need images? If you have a website or a blog, you typically would use images to simply break the blocks of text. If you go to any website or a blog and all you see is the wall of text that just never ending, it's really not appealing to the eye and it seems like it's hard to read, it's hard to look through that blog and you probably wouldn't read all that information simply because it looks complicated and it looks like there is too much text. But if you see relevant images, they're breaking that block of text images that go between uh, paragraphs, it makes it a lot more appealing, it makes it more inviting and simply easier to read because you do give your eyes a break when you look through the image instead of concentrating on the text and trying to keep track of where exactly you are while reading the text. So that's one of the biggest reasons to have images for your content creation. Another reason, of course, is social media. So whenever you have a blog post once again and you wanna share it on Facebook, let's say, or Twitter, Twitter or any other platform, if you don't have an image attached to that uh, blog post, let's say featured image, right? Then when you share that content on Facebook, people are only going to see a title and part of the description of what that page is about or the blog post is about. And once again, it's not very appealing. So you need images for your social media sharing as well as your social media campaigns. If you have an Instagram account or if you're using Pinterest and the only way to promote yourself there to build your brand is having images. And sometimes you don't have your own images. So you could find images online and use them for that purpose. Once again, if you're going on YouTube and you're doing videos, it's very important to have interesting and exciting thumbnails for your videos. And one of the ways to make your video thumbnail more interesting is by attaching an image that you find elsewhere. There are many other reasons to seek images for your online content, and I'm sure you have your own reasons. And if you're a beginner to online marketing, you might think, well, what's the problem with that? I simply go on Google uh, or Google Images. I search for whatever image I need, and I just grab an image off of Google, and I use that for my website. Now, you can't do that. Simply because an image is online does not mean that you can use it. And it actually means that you can't really use it most of the time. I would say like 99% of the time, you can't use an image that you simply find online because somebody holds the copyrights for that image and you're not allowed to use it. Simply because it's on Google does not mean that it's copyright free and that anyone can use it for personal or commercial purposes. Also, you might have heard that you could put a filter on Google image search and you specify in that filter that you only want to see images that are copyright free. And that kind of works, but not really because the problem with this is that anyone can upload any image online and claim it's copyright free. They could claim the ownership of that image. And often there isn't a way for you or me or Google to verify the authenticity of that claim. We can't really know if the person really is the owner of that image and if they really are giving you uh, all the rights to use that image however you want. So you can't really trust those images and those claims. If you do end up grabbing an image uh, from some website and using it for your own blog or for your own website, most of the time there really wouldn't be any problem because nobody would ever know that you used that image without having the rights to use it. However, often and off, you will get a cease and desist letter, which basically asks you to remove that image from your website. And once you do that, everything's fine. But there's also a possibility of you getting sued over that image. And believe it or not, but there are companies that specialize in extracting money from people using images without permission. So they have this army of people that all they do 
all day long is simply look for websites online that are using images without the proper permission to use them. And it's very simple to do. If you use Chrome, you could simply right click on any image and do a Google search for that image and Google will show you every single website that is indexed that is using the same image. So that's very, very easy. And I'm sure these companies that specialize in suing people for using images, they actually have a software that automates this whole search and simply gives them results and simply shows them who is using those specific images without having the right to use them. So be very, very careful. Don't think that you could just grab any image online and use it for your blog, even though it's uh, personal, not commercial, because once we go into commercial websites and if you're actually making money off of your blog and you get caught using an image without permission, you could potentially get sued for a lot of money because, well, they estimate that you made profit based on their image, which might or might not be the case, but that's beyond my point. If you are not 100% sure that you have the right to use an image in your content, simply don't use it. Now, this episode isn't to only warn you about those images. I am here to help you find images for your blog, for your website, for your social media channels, for your content. And I'll be sharing some of my favorite places where I get images and some other tips along the way. So keep listening. Before I move on, I would love to invite you to follow the Extra Paycheck Podcast on Spotify. Simply head over to extrapodcast.com slash Spotify or look up Extra Paycheck Podcast within your Spotify app. Follow the podcast there. This will help tremendously. The very first way that you could have images for your website, for your blog that you can use 100% is if you create those images by yourself. And I know that you might be thinking, oh, that's complicated. I need an expensive camera. I need a studio. I need this whole crazy setup. And it's not true because most of the smartphones that we have today, a smartphone that you have in your pocket, most likely takes better pictures than DSLRs that were popular and were sold 10 years ago or a little bit more. Even some of the new cameras on the market right now don't take pictures as nice and as beautiful as smartphones. So that's tip number one. Think of how you can use your smartphone to make your own images for your own blog, for your own niche. And I know that it's not always possible, especially if you need models or if you need something more professional that you simply don't have access to and you can't take a picture of it. Of course, you'll have to look elsewhere. But that's one of the ways to go about it is to take your own pictures and use them for your business. A while ago, I published a blog post where I explained how to create your own light box from pretty much scrap material that you have uh, just lying around your house, you could make a nice little light box or white box as some people call it and take very nice shots of small products, small items and many other things which could come in very, very handy for your blog and for your content. And I'll make sure to link to the step-by-step uh, blog post within the show notes. So keep listening to this episode and I'll share the link to the show notes later on as well. Another way to create images for your website is to use a software such as Photoshop, or if you don't have Photoshop or can't afford Photoshop, there are great alternatives such as GIMP, Canvas, and many other image creating software online and offline. And a lot of it is completely free. All you need to do is spend some time mastering the software and learning how it works, learning how to create beautiful visuals for uh, your online business. If you can't create images for whatever reason, there are two different websites that I can recommend, which I use quite often and I love them. First one is called unsplash.com. They have loads and loads of beautiful pictures that are completely free and they're also copyright free, which means that you can use those pictures. You don't have to credit the author of that image, although it's highly encouraged because people are contributing their work. People are contributing their time, their creativity, and their images to that website so you could use it for your projects. Now, it would be nice if you could credit the author of the image, but you do not need to do that. Um, The copyright license that comes with those images allows you to use them, modify them, do whatever you want with those images without crediting the author. Another website that does that is stocksnap.io, also a great website with a lot of beautiful beautiful images, very high quality pictures that you can use for your online content. There is a small issue, however, with both of these websites and many other websites that promise you free images is that they can't guarantee 100% 
that the images are completely copyright free. They try their best to make sure that photographers or users who submit those images to the website are actually rightful owners of those images. And I know for a fact that many photographers who contribute to those websites are verified photographers and both Unsplash and uh, StockSnap, they are sure that those photographers are authentic and they're contributing the real work. So you actually do have the right to use it whichever way you want. Another little issue with those websites is that in their terms and conditions, which I spent a lot of time reading simply so I could release this episode properly and not misguide you in any way. So their uh, terms and conditions state that if an image or if a picture on their website has a visible face of a person or a model in that photo, you might need to seek a release form from that model. This happens for a simple reason because um, a lot of people that pose for photography, let's say you have a photographer friend and he asks you to pose for whatever pictures, you may do that and you will be happy if people use the picture of you online for whatever reason, but I'm pretty sure that you'll have your restrictions. Let's say you wouldn't want your picture to be used in order to promote gambling or something within the adult industry or dating websites or whatever subject or niche that might seem taboo to you or anything that you might uh, think of as unethical. So of course you wouldn't want just anybody to use your picture for any product. So the models in these pictures are probably fine with most websites that will use this image, but both Unsplash and StockSnap cannot guarantee that. So to be 100% safe, you'll have to find who that model is in that very picture, get in touch with them and ask them permission to use um, the picture of their face or whatever for your blog, for the content you're creating. Now, the easy way to avoid that is simply use pictures that do not have any people in them. If it's a person that you see from far away and you can't really see what their picture looks like, or if you simply don't don't see the face in the picture, then yeah, go ahead and use that. You don't need a release form because you can't really say who that person is. The same goes with um, brands being present in that photo. If it's a picture of a can of a very known beverage or any other trademark or logo, you might not have the right to use that. And that's up to you to decide if you should or should not be using that. Once again, if you're working in an industry that's in a gray area or something that could be considered unethical, you should should not be using any logos or recognizable brands or anything of that sort unless you have received specific permission to do so. Just go with something more generic, something simple. Use images that don't have anything really recognizable in them. Otherwise, you're risking uh, running into trouble with the owner of that brand or with a person whose face you're trying to use. The last but not least way of getting photos, this is my favorite. It's a website called Deposit Photos. I've been using Deposit Photos for about a year and I love the pictures that I find on their website. Now, the big difference between Deposit Photos, Unsplash and StockSnap is that Deposit Photos is not free. You actually have to pay for images. Although they aren't very expensive, you have to pay something for them. However, this comes with a few perks. So first one, all the images are completely copied right free once you purchase them you could use them any way you want except very very few images that specify that if you are going to print it in a newspaper or something like that you need some special permission but i would say more than 99 percent of the photos you can use them whichever way you want without crediting the authors of those images of course because you are paying for the right to use those images another cool perk is that when photographers submit those images to deposit photos, they have to prove their identity. They have to prove that they're real owners of those pictures. And if there is a model featured in that photo, if there's a person whose face you can actually see clearly and recognize, those photographers need to submit release forms from those models to deposit photos. So you don't have to do that. You can use a picture of anybody or anything that comes from deposit photos without worrying of being sued or without worrying about infringing on anybody's copyrights or anybody's rights in general. This website is one of the biggest and fastest growing 
photo libraries in the world. They have about 60 million files right now. So any niche, any subject, any industry you could think of, they probably have images related to that industry. One last piece of advice that I would like to share with you here is that I try to keep proof of every single image that I use for my online content. So whenever I download an image from Unsplash, from StockSnap, and even from Deposit Photos, I always take a screenshot of that image being on that website. I do that to have proof that I got that image from that website that claimed that I have all the rights to use that image. I do that for a simple reason that if I ever run into trouble for using uh, an image that I didn't have the right to use, I could kind of prove that I did my best to make sure that I have the right to use that image. So if I have a screenshot of that image being available on deposit photos, I could say, well, you know, I paid for that image. I had no way of knowing I had no right to use it. I actually paid money for it from this website that was giving it to me. And the same goes to Unsplash and StockSnap. They claim that all the images they have on their websites are completely copyright free and you can use them whichever way you want. And I truly believe them, or at least I believe that they are trying to make sure that this is the case. But just to be safe, to protect yourself from any possible problems in the future, do take a screenshot of whenever you're downloading that image from any of those websites and this will help you prove that you didn't have bad intentions, that you didn't just go grab it off of Google Images or any other websites, that you actually got it from a place that claimed that you have the right to use it. I know it's time consuming to take those screenshots, although it takes just a few seconds, but I think you're better safe than sorry. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you have any questions or suggestions, if you want to add anything to this episode, head over to extrapodcast.com slash 146. This is where I'll be sharing show notes for today's episode. This is also where I'll be sharing that link to the tutorial on how to make your own pictures. I'll be sharing links to Unsplash, Snap, Deposit Photos, and maybe a few others. So make sure to check it out. And if you have any questions, once again, use the comment form on that page. Also head over to extrapodcast.com slash iTunes in order to subscribe to this show on iTunes. If you haven't already, please do leave a rating and a review. This will help tremendously. Also head over to extrapodcast.com slash Spotify in order to follow the show on Spotify. Once again, thank you so much for tuning in and I'll talk to you next Monday.